it's always fun to see the homebrew community decide to do something just to see if they can. Like, those usually lead to some of the most surprising moments when it comes to consoles or PC. And in this case, it's actually bringing them together because, believe it or not, there's a port that was released for the GameCube. And it brings an older version of Windows to the system. Like, outright. It's not emulating it or anything. It's, it's actually installing natively to a power PC console and you know I had to try it out so I did just that and I figured we would check it out here today where we tried to install it and see how it boots up and I guess kind of what it can do I mean there's only so much right it's it's Windows NT so if you guys enjoy this video make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you're new so let's get the obvious question out of the way right now what's the point in loading Windows NT onto the GameCube well this is one of those cases of uh, because we can. To me, it's always been fun to see what the homebrew community can accomplish with these older legacy systems and to see just how capable some of these consoles really are. Back then, it was a big deal just to have a screen to boot up to without a game being inside of it. Running Windows of any kind, that was a pipe dream. Of course, a lot of this relies on breakthroughs and exploiting a system like the GameCube that just weren't around even 10 years ago. Fortunately, I have a bunch of GameCube consoles that are already outfitted with Swiss and SD card access, so after seeing the news that Windows NT had been ported to the GameCube, I decided to look into it a bit more and find out exactly how difficult it really was to go from start to Windows desktop on the PowerPC console. Let's start here from the source. A programmer named Wack Zero released this build with support for GameCube, Wii, and Wii U. If you were going to attempt this, I would probably recommend doing it on the Wii or the Wii U since you'll have access to the USB ports on either of them, making it easier to move files over after installation. In my case, I wanted to go with the GameCube mostly because I thought it'd be fun to see Windows boot up on it, and it being the least powerful system out of the three would give us at least a good baseline. To start, you will need to source a copy of Windows NT 3.51 or 4.0, which is pretty easy to find online through the archive. The reason we're using Windows NT is because it actually supports PowerPC, and while this was mostly set up for businesses and server tasks, it can provide us with a basic Windows experience. Along with a copy of Windows NT, we just need the files provided on GitHub by Wack Zero. The GitHub I'm sourcing here does have a written step-by-step -step guide for setting this up on the GameCube along with the other platforms, so I'll have it linked down below. I have a GameCube that's already equipped with a Raspberry Pi Pico and an SD card through SD2 SB2 on the bottom port. I figured this is the most likely setup people have now with how popular it's become online, so I'll use it in this video. After extracting the two zip files to the SD card, I moved the Windows NT ISO into the NT folder along with a raw two gigabyte image file that I made with QEMU. It's funny to think now, but back in 1996, a two gigabyte drive would be considered high end. Now it's a tiny flash drive many of us probably have buried in a drawer somewhere. At this point, I'm done moving files onto the SD card and we can move over to the GameCube and into Swiss. This is the SD card that I would normally have my game ISOs and other applications on, but because I made that raw image file earlier, Installing Windows onto this SD card for the system to boot won't affect any of the other files on the same card. In the menu on the GameCube with Swiss, we should have an application here called ArcLoader. That needs to be launched to start up Windows NT, and the Wii and the Wii U, they'll use different files, so just check to make sure you're loading the right one. From here, it's a more tedious Windows install process than we now have, which something like Windows 10 or Windows 11, I forgot how much needed to be specified back during these early Windows versions and just how dressed up all of it is now. That raw partition can be formatted to accept Windows NT. And I was a bit concerned about navigating these mem menus with just the GameCube controller. Fortunately, it seems that was already covered since you can get through the entire setup and even navigate Windows with the controller and the help of that C-Stick. After restarting the system several times and following the instructions carefully, it was starting to come together with drivers being loaded and input configurations being found. It was fun to see ArtX Flipper as an adapter to choose from along with GameCube in general being shown in the Windows installer. Eventually, I got to a screen asking for a product key and realized I didn't have one. At this time, Windows NT, it's considered completely legacy, it's abandoned, so 
Product keys are basically just thrown around online as a means to bypass this screen. Apparently, it's easy to make up a key as well since it follows a date, time, year format. And as long as it all lines up the key check, it'll just let you through. This part is probably the most annoying though since text entry is done through the C-Stick and that means you're just scrolling through text the whole time. I had made an adapter for the GameCube to use a keyboard and mimic the crazy looking controller for Fancy Star on Online and while it works there, for some reason, key presses aren't picked up here. I can move the mouse around, however, with WASD as usual, so it's definitely working, just not how I want it to, where I can type out commands easily. Apparently, the official keyboard controller does work in this environment, but it's still not something I've added to my collection, so... The C stick it is. Oh, I also want to point out there were a few times throughout the install process where I thought things were just frozen, but it turns out it's just taken a while to load the next screen or unpack files. Figured I'd point this out in case anyone out there is trying this, gets concerned after a minute or two or of nothing happening. After completing the rest of the setup, I had one final restart to do, and now when opening the Arc Loader app, there's an option to launch Windows NT, which will finally kick us into the familiar looking desktop. You are able to navigate everything here with the controller just fine, using the left stick to move the mouse. The A button is your left click, the B button is your right click. The resolution, it's set to 640 by 480, which, hey, that's familiar territory for the GameCube as it is. I spent some time navigating around and it's certainly not the smoothest experience here with applications taking a bit to load and just general movement being somewhat choppy. That said, hey, you know what? Paint? Yeah, it worked fine. Also, do you remember those old screensavers we used to have with Windows, like the morphing ball that would bounce around with a bunch of colors or the maze those are all here and they work all right on the GameCube the maze has its moments where it slows to a crawl and eventually goes back to normal speed almost like it's it's trying to catch up I remember just sitting there watching the screensaver for minutes on end at times back in the day and yes you know what? those were actually some somewhat impressive 3d visuals back then remember these were the days of Wolfenstein 3d doom dark forces so not really the standards we necessarily have now for 3D fidelity. Unfortunately, at this point, there really isn't much else for me to do here in Windows NT. I was able to move files to the GameCube by packing any I wanted to open into an ISO and renaming it Disk00, which then would show up in File Explorer. I couldn't get anything to boot outright, however, and since there really wasn't much software support in the way of games for Windows NT on PowerPC. This will probably take more digging to see if anything is out there that could actually run in this environment. But hey, at least there's always paint. I did update to at least Service Pack 2 for Windows NT. After that, Service Pack 3 was not supported for PowerPC, which is unfortunate because to my understanding, they did update things like DirectX support. But after that was done, we got this message here, which according to my analytics, roughly 40% of you should get a nice chuckle out of this. I wasn't able to configure the network either for an internet connection since the front GCNet adapter I have here wasn't found. Neither, unfortunately, was the broadband adapter. I'm not sure if there's anything I could do, even if it was able to connect to the internet, however, since many web pages wouldn't be easily supported. Really, there's not much reason to install Windows NT onto a system like this, other than seeing if it's even possible. That said, I think it's really cool to see what's possible, especially with these older systems, and it shows just how far the homebrew community is willing to go to prove it. Updates have been getting posted on GitHub for this project, so maybe over time more people will try it out and find other uses for it. I think for now I'll probably spend some time just finding a reliable way to move files over to this partition and try out different applications and again maybe some games to see what will actually work, and I'll let you know maybe in a future video on that. It might even be a good idea to take a look at the Wii Next since it's set up better for something like this with its USB ports. Otherwise, let me know what you think about seeing Windows boot up on the GameCube and if you're thinking about trying this for yourself. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.